I know you're excited to start invading Moyos and conquering kingdoms. Where do we start, Vadim? Let's invade now! But before we talk about the global picture of when to invade exactly and the order of actions, let's get armed with some standard techniques. When you find yourself inside your opponent's Moyo, you need to make light shapes and as a result of this, you should be able to make two eyes. But how? What does it mean, light shapes? In Japanese, this is known as sabaki. It's a number of techniques that allow you to make flexible shapes and make eyes in the process. And it means that this is finally the time when you can start attaching everywhere. Well, you look for weaknesses, attach, and that gives you enough momentum to live or escape. Take a look at this example here. White has this area at the bottom of the board, and it might look very dangerous to invade here very deep. And yet, there are some weaknesses right there. And if we make use of them, black can invade like this. And if white now covers black, not allowing black to escape, for example, playing something like this, then we can attach. There's a weakness here, so white needs to connect and then a jump and this jump threatens to cut the three stones white connects again and now a very light knight's move so we invaded deeply we attached and made use of some of these weaknesses and now it looks impossible for white to capture these black stones black escapes successfully this is a simple example of sabaki when you attach however you shouldn't expect your opponent to just give up all their stones, crumbling under your might and courage. There are a couple of follow-ups you need to know once you attach. Here's an interesting example from a game between two European professionals. Stanislav Freilak as white and Tanguy Le Calvé as black. Stanislav is white just pushed here, trying to turn this moyo into territory. And this could work, except right now, black invades and ruins all of white's plans. The point of invasion is also very important here. So if you're black, where would you invade? Whenever you see a high stone in the fourth line somewhere in the Moyo, it's very common to invade low and knights move away from it. And Tanguy invaded here. And the minute this stone appeared on the board, Stanislav knew that he wouldn't be able to kill the stone here. And here's why. Let's say if white tries to cover the stone from the center, like this, not to let it escape. In this case, black would attach, just like we said. White will hane, of course. And next, very important, we are not going to extend. An extension will make for a more solid, but heavier shape. And that's not what we want. Black is trying to make a more flexible shape. So, a double hane is the trick you need to learn here. If white just uh, connects or extends here, black is going to make eye shape like this. Black will be alive. If white tries to cut a tart, black connects. Trying to separate is not going to work. A tart and something will collapse. Black is going to live here. So allowing this attachment and double hane leads to a simple life for black. And if white tries not to allow that, by playing this kick, for example, then unfortunately there are some weaknesses in this area. Black jump in the game. White makes a good shape. Black extends. Hane and cut. And this is another powerful technique that we'll take a look at in just a moment. Atari. Atari. Black connects, white fixes this weakness, and black starts to escape. In the end, black lived here successfully and white's area got significantly reduced. Now you guys know a trick that works against Stanislav, so if you have a chance of playing against him, you know what to do. Stash, I'm sorry I told everyone. Mm -mm, Vadim, I caught up in the end game and I won this game by one and a half points. And if attaching and double hane doesn't work in some situation, then there's another very similar weapon that you can use. Let's take a look. This is not really a moyo situation here, but it works to demonstrate the technique. After the AB exchange, it's now black's turn. And 
black can play the same thing. Attach first, and after white responds, instead of playing the hane, black has the option of playing the cross cut, like this, aiming to give up the stone and make a better shape in exchange. If white now tries any extensions, then black will Atari, and white's position will collapse. If white simply takes the stone, then black will Atari, and if white connects, another Atari. All of these moves for free, thanks to this sacrifice. White takes, and black can make shape like this. This kind of shape could really help black if black was inside white's moyo right now. Of course, white always has the option of not giving black such a perfect shape. Instead of connecting here, white can just take the stone right away. But in this case, of course, black is going to Atari. And with this ko in the pocket, black had hoped to make shape easily. If white chooses not to play this ko, however, if white just connects, then black will extend, and black will easily make shape later. For example, if white tries to ruin the shape here, black can attach, and black is quite comfortable here. And finally, don't be afraid of losing some of your stones. When you invade deep, you need to be super gentle and modest. You've probably heard that many lizards have the ability to shed their tail at will. It's an ability they gain that could allow them to survive an attack from a predator. Losing a tail is better than losing their life. When you invade deep, you can think of yourself and your stones as a lizard with many tails, and you should be prepared to lose any number of them as long as you keep your life and escape. If your opponent tries to cut you and capture something, it's no time to be greedy. Give up some of your stones and let most of your stones survive and make sure that Molly reduction was a success. Now let's see how this can work in the game. In this example, white has an area slash moyo in the upper right. It's black's turn, and today the AI would suggest this sort of shoulder hit to just lean on the white stones and then escape out of here. But in the old days, this kind of move was really popular. Now let's say white protects the upper side. Black pushes here, white protects the corner, a good shape, white descends. And now, instead of jumping anywhere, here along the side, black jumps out of here. And this is the best move according to AI. Black is jumping out of here fast, and there's no way for white to prevent that. But we remember that a knight's move always has weaknesses, and if you're defending with it, you have to be prepared that your opponent is going to cut. So. In this case, black should be prepared in case white tries to push like this and then cut here. Are you prepared? How would you continue? Now let me show you the most desirable outcome for white here. After white cuts like this, white wants you to get separated and start struggling with two groups at the same time. So if you now Atari from here, and try living here on the right side, maybe you can do this, but then white will get so much strength and so much power on the outside, and this is not gonna be worth it. You have to remind yourself that those three stones are nothing more than a lizard's tail, and you should be ready to shed them at any moment. So when white cuts, just give them up. Atari from the outside. White now has to extend, and we push White stones are short on liberties, so white needs to respond, otherwise black will block and the white stones are captured. So white needs to extend, and we can gain even more strength by not blocking here. Even this is okay, actually, but we can play like this. And white has to bend another move here. And another one. All of these moves in Sente. White needs to respond, otherwise this move will capture. So, white captures all of those stones, and now we can fix the shape, and at the same time this is a peep. And if white responds to this, we can maybe fix another weakness, like this. And now check this out. We gave up some of those unimportant stones, but we got an impressive wall thickness 
in the process, and now these white stones that used to be part of white's moyo look heavy and can be attacked next. This is absolutely perfect for black. So if we go all the way back, this push and cut for white actually turns out to be a very big mistake. Instead of accepting black's offer, white should probably just hit the vital point like this, threatening to cut next, forcing black to respond like this, for example, white would extend, black makes a good shape, a bamboo joint, and white would protect the upper side. And this looks like a normal sequence for both. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org, except there you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.